be ready 5 seconds i was one of many children a short boy born to tall and handsome parents we lived in our ancestral house which was built in the middle of the 19th century it was a fairly large pakka house made of limestone and brick my father used to avoid all comforts and luxuries however i would say mine was a very secure childhood both materially and emotionally the second world war broke out when i was 8 years old for reasons i have never been able to understand a sudden demand for tamarind seeds erupted in the market i used to collect the seeds and sell them to a provision shop a day's collection would fetch me the princely sum of one anna my brother in law would tell me stories about the war which i would later attempt to trace in the headlines our area being isolated was completely unaffected by the war but soon india was forced to join the allied forces and something like a state of emergency was declared the first casualty came in the form of the suspension of the train halt the newspapers now had to be bundled and thrown out from the moving train that forced my cousin who distributed newspapers to look for a helping hand to catch the bundles and as if naturally i filled the slot it helped me earn my first wages half a century later i can still feel the surge of pride in earning my own money for the first time every child is born with some inherited characteristics and trained in certain ways by figures of authority i inherited honesty and self discipline from my father from my mother i inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness and so did my three brothers and sister i had three close friends in my childhood all these boys were from orthodox hindu brahmin families as children none of us ever felt any difference amongst ourselves because of our religious differences and upbringing during the annual shri sita rama kalyanam ceremony our family used to arrange boats with a special platform for carrying idols of the lord from the temple to the marriage site situated in the middle of the pond near our house events from the ramayana and from the life of the prophet were the bedtime stories my mother and grandmother would tell the children in our family one day when i was in the 5th standard a new teacher came to our class i used to wear a cap which marked me as a muslim and i always sat in the front row next to shastri who wore the sacred thread the new teacher could not stomach a hindu priest's son sitting with a muslim boy i was asked to go and sit on the back bench i felt very sad and so did shastri the image of him weeping when i shifted to the last row left a lasting impression on me after school we went home and told our respective parents about the incident shastri's father the high priest of the rameshwaram temple summoned the teacher and in our presence told the teacher that he should not spread the poison of social inequality and communal intolerance in the minds of innocent children he bluntly asked the teacher to either apologize or quit the school and the island not only did the teacher regret his behavior but was ultimately reformed then the second world war was over and india's freedom was imminent 
Indians will build their own India, declared Gandhiji. The whole country was filled with optimism. I asked my father for permission to study at the district headquarters. When I was a girl of about twelve, I used to stay in a village with my grandparents. Those days the transport system was not very good, so we used to get the morning papers only in the afternoon. The weekly magazine used to come one day late. All of us would wait eagerly for the bus which used to come with the papers, weekly magazines, and the post. At that time, Triveni was a very popular writer in our language. She was a wonderful writer. Her style was easy to read and very convincing. Her stories usually dealt with complex problems in the lives of ordinary people and were always very interesting. Unfortunately, she died very young. Even now, after 40 years, people continue to appreciate her novels. One of her novels was appearing as a serial in the weekly. It is the story of an old lady and her ardent desire to go to Kashi. Most Hindus believe that going to Kashi is the ultimate punya. This old lady also believed in this, and her struggle to go there was described in that novel. In the story, there was also a young orphan girl who falls in love, but there is no money for the wedding. In the end, the old lady gives away all her savings without going to Kashi. She says, the happiness of this orphan girl is more important than worshipping the Lord at Kashi. My grandmother never went to school, so she could not read. Every Wednesday, the magazine would come and I would read the next episode of the story to her. During that time, she would forget all her work and listen with the greatest concentration. Later, she could repeat the entire text by heart. My grandmother, too, never went to Kashi, so she identified herself with the novel's protagonist. More than anybody else, she was the one most interested in knowing what happened next in the story and used to insist that I read the serial out to her. After hearing what happened next in the novel, she would join her friends at the temple courtyard where we children would also gather to play hide and seek. She would discuss the latest episode with her friends. At that time, I never understood why there was so much of debate about the story. Once I went for a wedding with my cousins to the neighboring village. In those days, a wedding was a great event. We children enjoyed ourselves thoroughly. We would eat and play endlessly, savoring the freedom because all the elders were busy. I went for a couple of days but ended up staying there for a week. When I came back to my village, I saw my grandmother in tears. I was surprised, for I had never seen her cry even in the most difficult of situations. What had happened? I was worried. She did not reply. I did not understand and forgot about it. In the night, after dinner, we were sleeping in the open terrace of the house. It was a summer night and there was a full moon. My grandmother came and sat next to me. Her affectionate hands touched my forehead. I realized she wanted to speak. When I was a young girl, I lost my mother. 
There was nobody to look after and guide me. My father was a busy man. He got married again. In those days, people never considered education essential for girls, so I never went to school. I got married very young and had children. I became very busy.